I'm going to show you how to run model predictive control with the temperature control lab. Before going over some of the equations, let me just go ahead and review briefly what we're dealing with here. This is the temperature control lab, and it has two heaters and two temperature sensors. And this is a schematic diagram of that. So we can control these. This is going to be Q2, and that's going to be Q1. And then this is going to be our temperature in Celsius, uh, number one. And this one is going to be our temperature in Celsius, too. So we have two sensors and two heaters. For this first model predictive control, we're just going to use just the very first one right here. And it's like the second one doesn't exist. So we're just going to do a single input, single output for this one. But let's go ahead and review our, the math behind this and why we're doing this. So we want to be able to maintain at a target temperature. In this case, Y would be the temperature. And we want to minimize it with respect to some norm. So for example, if you had a one norm, that would be the absolute difference between the two. Uh, you could have a squared error, uh, or you could have the two norm, which is just squared, and then you take the square root. OK, and we're going to be minimizing certain parameters. For example, in this case, it's going to be, uh, it's going to, well, not minimizing these parameters, but it's going to be the heater value that we're going to be adjusting. So this value under here is the one that we can adjust. So P in this case is, is the heater value. And then we're going to be subject to certain differential or algebraic equations. Now, this is the third part of the class. So first of all, we did dynamic modeling and then dynamic estimation. Now we're on to dynamic control and optimization. And this uh, a subset of that is called model predictive control. So we're going to take this system and then take the output of that and then have an MPC controller where we have a set point. And then we also have, in this case, our TC1. And then out of this comes our Q value, which in this case is named uh, the P value, OK, the input to our system. And the output is going to be the uh, temperature, OK, just like is written there. So there's our uh, block diagram. Now, if we look at model predictive control, one of the things that it does is it uses a model to be able to predict into the future. So the red line is what we're trying to hold to. And the yellow line, OK, that's our predicted trajectory. So we want to try to get these points as close as we can okay, to the reference trajectory. And the way we'll do that is we'll adjust the Q value, or in the mathematical formulation, that was called P. And this was our Y value. And we also have our Y uh, trajectory that we're trying to hold to. OK, and we do that at discrete time points into the future and solve these equations as we go out. This is called our time horizon right here. OK, so let's go to the code. Um, the way to get there is just come to the apmonitor.com slash heat .htm, And that'll bring you to the lab website. Now, we're going to be going over these advanced estimation control methods. OK, so you can select that very last one there, and it gives this schematic diagram, as we see. And then you have the temperature control lab files on GitHub. So go ahead and select that, and that'll bring you to GitHub. And then you can clone or download this. OK, this little green button on the right lets you clone it. Um, or you can use that Git link there to um, retrieve the files. Okay, we're going to be working in the model predictive controls directory. So if you select that, we can just browse these. And we're just going to start off with a first order linear system. Okay, and in here we have Gecko, which is Python. We have MATLAB. We also have Python, the AP Monitor Python, and then a Simulink example. We're going to do the Simulink example first. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of here. I have the files. And if you just come in here, you'll go to Model Predictive Control. And here's our first order linear. Now the model that we're using is right here, which is just a first order linear system. And so let me write that out in terms of the equations that we're going to be working with. 
we have um, our temperature in degrees Celsius equals the derivative of that times the time constant equals this uh, minus TC plus KC times the heater value. Okay, so our heater, and then we also have heater steady state that uh, we're going to subtract it from. And then also uh, we have uh, this value right here. I'm going to put a quantity around there, TC uh, steady state as well. Okay, so just put it in deviation variable form. Okay, um, so here's our equation right here. You can see that. Um, and we just have some parameters. You can adjust those. Those are the gain, time constant, um, and then you have some steady state values as well. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and run this. You just open it up. You can run different versions of it. If you have an earlier version like 2015A, uh, this one's 2017A. So if you just open it up, it'll bring up the, uh, the different blocks that we talked about in the block diagram. And, uh, you know, if you have MATLAB open already, sometimes the directory has some supporting libraries like the real-time library. You need to make sure that you uh, close out MATLAB and then open it back up again, and then you can run it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this. It's just going to use, here's my MPC right here, and then as I run it, I'll explain, you know, what's going on here. I have my set point, my desired temperature that I'm trying to um, control to. Here's my, this is a web interface that just popped up. Here is, I'll minimize that, we'll go back to it in just a little bit. Here's the temperature control lab right here that has a heater that comes in and the temperature that goes out. <clears throat> now you can see the heater value. Um, this heater value, MPC told it to go to 100% right there. That's the maximum, that's the purple line and you can see the temperature starting to rise up to this yellow set point that's the desired temperature right here on uh, set to 30 right now okay so it's it's going to rise and uh, and it's going to then at a certain point the heater will back off as it sees that it's uh, given enough uh, energy to that uh, device to be able to maintain it at the temperature. We might have a little bit of overshoot because we have some model mismatch with our, okay, so you can see the heater starting to come down right now and it's uh, climbing down. You can see it's it's going past there a little bit. This is really a, it's more like a second or third order system and we're trying to control it with a first order model. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit of a mismatch there. But every time it goes through this, okay, every second it calculates a new heater value, and that comes out. This has a new temperature, okay, and that feeds back, okay, here as an input to the MPC, and then also the set point is also an input. And then we're just uh, plotting the set point, the heater value, and then the measured temperature. Okay, don't mess with this uh, real-time pacer right here. Uh, just leave that at one, so that helps us uh, enforce the one-second cycles there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and increase this a little bit. You can see it turning the corner there, and it would be able to control it. So I'm gonna go up to 50 for my set point, and you'll see that uh, the heater value is going to rise right away, and then you'll see it um, you know, try to control it. Okay, so um, we could let this run. You can see the heater uh, turned on. And you'll see that temperature start to rise again. You'll see, again, just a little bit of overshoot as it goes up, uh, but it'll maintain it at that temperature. Okay, and then if you go in this directory uh, that I shared with you, you'll also see um, you know, a screenshot of what it looks like if you let this go uh, for a long period of time. There, I just kept the set point on 30 and you can see it uh, you know, tracks very well. Okay, so uh, that is the very first one. Later tutorials, we're gonna go back through and I'll show you a second order linear. Okay, that's gonna use a, a second order instead of a first order, and then our second order nonlinear. So this one is a multiple heater, multiple temperature sensor, multiple input, multiple output. But these first two, 
uh, right here. The linear ones, those are just single input, single output. So just one heater, one temperature sensor. Okay, so that's just a brief demo on how to use Simulink uh, in mo with model predictive control for this temperature control lab. Um, you know, we'll start going through this more in the course. I'll just take you back to the, uh, the course website. Actually, I was going to show you this web interface as well. Okay, so this shows the, uh, the future move plan right here. So we're going to be, if I maximize it to full screen, I can see that a little bit better. Uh, it shows you know, where it thinks it's tracking the temperature. And you can see the purple model and then the track values. So it's trying to follow that reference trajectory to get back to the set point. So you can see it went just a little bit high there. And then you can see the time as I go out to about 30 seconds into the future. It's able to track into the new uh, temperature set point, which is about 50 degrees. Okay, and then if I look at the move plan, okay, the Q values, uh, that's what the, uh, it thinks it's going to do over this time period. Okay, so you can see uh, right here, I'll go ahead and maximize this just by clicking on the screen. Okay, so here is the current value right here, uh, zero, and there is uh, the constantly adjusting uh, move plan that it's making. And then once it gets past zero, then it kind of becomes static and it's just showing you what it did uh, before. Okay, so it's trying to figure out how to get to that set point. It's making fine tune adjustments as the uh, as it's tracking in on that set point and re-optimizing that trajectory. So every second it's redoing this um, optimization. And if we come back to uh, you know, MATLAB, you can print it out here to see the optimizer if you want to. I don't currently have that, okay, but you could, you could adjust it to see what the solver is doing. Okay, so let me go to the, I'll go to the course website. Uh, okay, now this is the third section of the course, and uh, we went through the modeling exercises, and then dynamic data and estimation. And then this final section is control. And part of that is model predictive control. You know, we call that, uh, it's a subset of dynamic optimization. And with this lab, we're gonna be going through these three, we've gone through two of these sections already. We're just gonna be going through this third section. Okay, so if I scroll all the way down, we're uh, gonna start off with lab F, uh, which is linear model predictive control. We'll use the second order system. And then we'll use the nonlinear model predictive control. That'll be our energy balance and hybrid uh, estimation that we did from, from uh, lab E. We'll use that model for lab G. And then lab H, um, you know, we'll do some more uh, moving horizon estimation. So we'll update the parameters with the MPC as kind of an adaptive uh, control approach. Okay, so a lot of things to look forward to on this uh, next section with uh, Control Lab in Model Predictive Control. Let's just take a peek one more time at how this is doing. Okay, it looks like it's settled out um, and it's, a, it's a basically tracking the uh, set point here.